Um, let's move on uh, to HER2, uh, another uh, genotype that we, we see in non-small cell lung cancer uh, mutations. Um, also amplification we see, but we'll talk about more about the mutations. And there's been some emerging data with new drugs for this specific molecular cohort. So, Anne, you want to talk about um, um, HER2 mutations in lung cancer and some of the data we've seen? Sure. So, HER2, as everybody knows, is part of the UGFR family. Um, or BP, and there have been, as described, amplifications, exon 20 insertion mutations, point mutations, and everybody's tried every single HER2 drug in breast cancer, and so far nothing has really panned out. So there have been two small abstracts that are, have been presented at World Lung Cancer Conference looking at um, an antibody drug conjugate, um, trastuzumab, with um, Tansen. And so the data, I would say, is still really early, um, but unfortunately, the response rates have been variable. They had like a 7% response rate up to 30% response rate. Again, these are in patients with non-small cell lung cancer, HER2 mutant point insertion, exon 20, who um, don't necessarily have amplification, um, but who for the most part are um, heavily pretreated. You know, the median is usually about two to three prior lines of therapy. So it's difficult to assess whether or not this would have benefit in these patients. But what I do want to turn to is the small molecule tyrosine kinase inhibitors, which we've all heard about initially at the prior World Lung Cancer Conference last year, as well as at ASCO. Um, and there's two that are currently under development. The first is posyotinib, um, small molecule TKI, seems to have a lot of efficacy against exon 20 insertion mutations in HER2. Um, and I'm just going to backtrack also actually for EGFR exon 20. Uh, insertion mutations, very high response rates there, close to 70% um, in some of the preliminary data. And so there does seem to be significant benefit in HER2 mutants. I've treated a few patients with the HER2 mutations, exon 20 insertions, and they've done beautifully. Mm -hmm. Now, you do have the toxicity profile of rash, and you know, some patients get diarrhea, so you have to pay attention to that. Um, and then Takeda also has a drug, a 788 which, as everybody knows, was presented primarily for the EGFR exon 20 mutations, um, but it does have some HER2 uh, mutation efficacy, but we don't have any data yet that's been publicly presented on that either. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, again, a, a nice story that's starting to be woven. HER2 is, I think we've had some trouble understanding how to target that uh, with TKIs, and we're just beginning to learning, maybe at, albeit at the cost of some toxicity that we can hopefully iron out over time. Off of a trial, is chemotherapy the standard for these patients? So I would say yes, chemotherapy is certainly appropriate for these patients. I usually recommend a pemetrexid-based regimen. How you choose to do that is up to you. One would argue, should you use ion power 150? I know MJ does not, mm -hmm. but you know one would argue that maybe that should be considered. Um, we just don't have enough data yet, though. And what I think we have to understand, too, is that HER2 mutations are not the same. Um, you know, the insertion exon 20 are different than the point mutations. The amplified are different than those who, you know, just have an insertion mutation. So I think we're going to learn a lot more as we go. Mm -hmm. Right now it's only 2%, but to be honest, a lot of people have not tested for it, though, you know, mm -hmm. until recently. And, so. and I, I would just emphasize that um, it's okay to start with chemo, let's say, because you want to get the patient started. and you know, patient has HER2 mutation. Uh, but these are the sort of, uh, if you identify these sort of genetic alterations, it would be important to do a little homework, find out if right. uh, in a referral center there Where is the a trial clinical is. trial yeah. available. Uh, because uh, the success rates with these trials, once you have identified a particular genetic abnormality, is pretty good, and I think these patients could yeah. benefit, and I think that should be considered. So there is a basket trial uh, of uh, neratinib currently open at our institution, and I'm sure some other institutions, and there is some data of neratinib efficacy in HER2-mutated patients. So I again want to emphasize that HER2 mutation should not be confused with HER2 positivity. Correct. These yes. patients yes. are HER2 negative by conventional criteria, and the trial presented here did allow some patients positive by conventional criteria, i.e. IHC3 plus or FISH positive. So IHC is, of course, on the cell surface, and uh, fish is obviously uh, in the nucleus, but this is the mutation, not the gene, mm -hmm. mutation in the gene. So th I just want to make that point. Uh, and the responses have not been as stellar. Uh, they are more in the 30% range 
not the 70-80% that we are used to in ALK, GFR, and now TRK. So it is possible that with these TKIs, we may, I mean, we still need data, that we may see those kind of uh, response rates also. Yes, I think in the insertion 20 mutants and the point mutations, I think the small molecule TKIs definitely are showing benefit there. But as MJ mentioned, being heard to positive by immunohistochemistry yes. is a totally different ball game. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, different biology. They, yeah, they, they allowed those patients on because they had the uh, trastuzumab is a monoclonal antibody, yes, so it yeah. has to bind to the cell surface. So that's why they did allow it on these antibody drug conjugate studies, but it's not allowed on the small molecule tyrosine kinase inhibitor trials.